Oh no. I've got a dead duck here. What's the matter, girl? Oh no. All right, here goes nothing. See it? Hello, dogs. How are you doing? Good to see you this morning. Hi, Abby girl. Hey, Toby dog. Hey, Abby. Toby's getting you in line. <laughs> Yeah, Abby continues to be a ball of energy every time I see her in the morning. First thing, sit. Good girl. Yes, that's what you gotta do. How's it going, Ginevra? The cats continue to not be amused with Abby. All right, guys, let's go inside. Come on. Yeah, Abby's all wound up this morning. I think I'm gonna have to take her on a little walk first before I start letting the birds out and doing her training. Let's go. We're going outside. Come on. We got some snow last night. Not a lot, just a dusting. Isn't that right, Toby Dog? Our pond, which was completely melted and is currently gigantic now it looks like it's frozen over next couple days are gonna actually be cold on the farm it's 15 degrees right now fahrenheit the ground was so muddy yesterday and now it's just like hard and very uneven we caught abby doing her business yeah i find it's important that when i get out here in the morning if i want abby to be as effective as possible with her training, whether it's her behavior around the birds or just obedience commands. I need to like let her come out here, run around first, work off a little bit of that puppy energy. How's it going there, puppy energy? Woo! -hoo. You wanna come walk in the ice with me? Let's see how we do. I think I'm gonna break it before you do. I can already hear it cracking. Yeah, I think dogs can sense when they're on ice and know to be careful. Pablo's willing to come out here. Abby looks a little terrified. Toby knows better. It'll be interesting to see what the ducks do when I bring them out today. You know, because me, I'm enough weight to break the ice. I don't think they'll break the ice. Stay. Yes, good girl. Come. Yes. Abby, sit. Stay. Come. Yes, good girl. Abby, can I get you to sit? Yes, good girl. Come. Yes, good girl. Pablo, sit. Bugger off, you bloody sod. Yeah, he doesn't want anything to do with this activity. <laughs> That's enough training time. Let's go let the animals out. Now, Molly and Ginny don't like to be around the dogs when they're training. Pablo seems to like to join us. Before I let the birds out, let's do a quick check on the cattle while I'm down here in the barn. How you doing this morning, Coos? Good to see you, Anna Green Gables. You're getting a little lick off the mineral block. Good for you. You deserve those minerals. Doesn't she, Ginny? Oh, the leaping Ginny. <laughs> I guess probably because it got cold and snowy, the cows have retreated to the barn. I see little Jimi Hendrix getting a drink off of his mom, and there's Belinda Carlisle waking up from a nap. <laughs> Ginny, you gotta back off. Just <laughs> like, I got my camera here to, like, zoom in on the cows, and Ginny keeps bumping into me. <laughs> Look at that. She just keeps rubbing up against me. I love you, girl. I really do, but you're making it hard for me to do my job here. Yeah, so Belinda Carlisle's there. She looks like she's doing good. Jimi Hendrix is right there. He looks like he's good. As far as our other animals go, there's the very pregnant Annabelle. How are you doing, Annabelle? Are you gonna like birth twins or something? You're getting huge, girl. I don't know. She looks like she's getting close, I think. And then our other gal who should be very close, Ariel the Little Mermaid, she's hanging out here right by the hay feeder. Yeah, I'll get you guys some more fresh hay today. How about that? Anna proves. Are you getting close to having a baby? I feel like they should be coming at any minute here. It's getting closer and closer. It would have been great if they actually had the baby over the last couple of days because it was so warm. Now it's cooling back down and you know, I think the highs in the 20s today, highs in the 20s tomorrow, lows in the single digits tonight, I think. So it'd be less than ideal to have the calves now, but I guess that's the way cattle do you, is what everybody tells me. All right, well, you keep doing your thing. I'll be patiently waiting for some results, okay? Okay, dogs, I got the feed for the animals. Let's let the birds out now. Abby, you're being so well behaved now. That's such a good girl, yes! You know, when I first show up, she's all spazzy. I do a little work with her. She settles down. Geese sound cranky like they want to get out. So we will oblige them. Let loose the goose! Good girl. Yes! Oh no. Oh no. Abby just knocked this egg out of my hands. Toby Dog, since you've been such a good boy, I'm going to give you a treat. You can have that egg. Yeah, you leave the cats alone. The cats. We'll mess you up there, Abba girl. Toby just crushed that egg. Good boy. I gotta go quickly collect my goose eggs now because I wanna make sure they all stay viable for hatching. I'm now collecting eggs for hatching 
You'll probably see a hatching video in a couple of weeks where you see what I'm doing right now in terms of the hatches of the geese first and then ducks. And then probably later in the year I'll do chickens. Uh oh. <laughs> Looks like one of the geese set up under here, Uncle Buck. This is not where I want goose laying in. Let's check this stall here. All right, that's two more. Look at that one, that one's a whopper. Uh-oh, we have a nest that is occupied. Excuse me, girl. I'm gonna need you to get out. Please don't attack me. Out you go, come on. Yeah, Abby, you don't want to mess with her. Out you go, Mother Goose, come on. Let's see what we got here. One, two, three, four. All right. All right, all right, all right. So far that's seven goose eggs on the morning, which right now we're averaging about 12 goose eggs a day. It's getting kind of crazy. I think we're in peak laying right now. And in case anyone's wondering, this is actually working really well as like nesting stations for the geese. These are definitely what they're using. I probably need to put in maybe another two stall just so that they have even more space and I can accommodate even more geese. And probably later in the season as it starts to warm up just a little bit more, I'll probably actually start letting a couple of those geese sit on their eggs so that they can hatch their own clutches too. Rise and grind, weird chickens. Come on, Ginevra, let's go let out the ducks. Release the Kraken! Hey, duckery dudes. I know, it's back to being cold again. Look at that poor little runner duck, she's so cold. And your pond went away, I know. Hey, Abby, no! You know the rule. You're not allowed to eat eggs like that. Only if I give them to you. All right, Toby, Abby's screw up is your reward. Not for you though, nope. You saw an opportunity, that egg just sort of fell out and you went for it, but it's still not okay. Kids these days. So my ducks have started laying eggs now and so I gotta get them collected too before those freeze. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh no. I've got a dead duck here. Oh, what is this? What's the matter, girl? Oh no. And it was bluey. So that duck is one of my oldest Khaki Campbell ducks. She's just a very sweet duck. Oh man. She was one of my original 40 ducks that I got here on the farm. She's always been a very sweet, reliable layer. And now she's dead. That sucks. You know, when our farm was attacked by a mink a couple of years back, she was really banged up and she was not doing well. In fact, that's why she got that blue leg tag. That attack was right around this time in 2019, so about three years ago. She's remarkably healed up and I don't know, now she's dead. You know, look, I have birds die every once in a while and it's sad, but when I have a bird that's been with me this long, it's actually a lot sadder, I don't know. It's, it's really unfortunate. And then the other thing I guess I gotta admit that I'm panicking about right now is, like I don't know what killed her. Like, you know, did she die of bird flu? Some other illness? Some sort of injury? I mean, it definitely doesn't look like a predator, so I'm not worried about that. Like if I look in here though, I definitely see like blood, like all around this area, like out of her vent. So something's going on there. So maybe it isn't bird flu. I don't know, is it duck cancer or something else? I have no idea, but it's just sad to see her gone. I don't usually like to do this, but in the past I have done autopsies on dead ducks to find out what killed them. I think given the fact that I'm seeing blood coming out of her vent and I'm very worried about some sort of other potential illnesses like bird flu, it's probably actually worth trying to do this one. This day's gonna suck today. I gotta just take her out of the yard so she doesn't create contamination. This really, really sucks. Now, like I said, this is ordinarily not something I like to do, but I feel like it's necessary. You know, one dead duck does not make a bird flu epidemic, but I need to know what killed this duck in order to know if I need to alert the authorities or take extra precautions with my birds. I mean, this is some seriously risky stuff. Like if the avian flu is actually found here on our farm, it could mean the death of all of our birds and not necessarily from them dying, but the agricultural department would probably actually order us to destroy the birds because of the risk it presents to the area. So like I said, this is not something I want to do, but I feel like it is very necessary. My wife, Allison, who's a nurse practitioner, told me I should take these precautions when I do this and not do anything stupid. All right, here goes nothing. 
So I know that there are gonna be some people who are really disappointed that I did not show the actual duck autopsy in this video. And to those folks, I wanna say sorry. Number one, I highly doubt that YouTube would let me show something like that. And then number two, I know there's a lot of other folks who watch our videos who wouldn't wanna see something like that. So that is why I chose not to show the autopsy. But now after completing the autopsy, I do feel like it was the right decision for me to do it. Because I think I know what happened to Blue the Duck. And the way I've reconstructed this crime makes me feel like I'm Bunk Moreland or Jimmy McNulty. So in terms of what did I actually find when I did the autopsy? Well, I can say with like 99.9% .9 certainty that it wasn't the avian flu that killed my duck. You know, earlier when I was looking at her, the fact that she had all that blood around her vent, that really was an indicator to me that something was going on. And so I actually started in like her lower digestive tract to see like if there were any sort of issues or like a tumor or something like that. And well, very quickly after I opened her up, I think I found the problem. It is this right here. See it? Yes, it is a balloon. Like a, just a standard old, regular issued latex balloon. My theory is she found it on the ground, she ate it, it worked its way through her digestive tract, and that's what ended up killing her. To be quite frank, I find that heartbreaking. Now the question from all this does emerge of how did a balloon get on my farm. It's not like I've thrown a birthday party on the farm in the last five years. The only theory I could actually have is that this balloon was once filled with helium. Somebody released it and went off into the sky. It ultimately fell and landed right on my farm. And then the duck being the curious being that it was, decided to try to eat it. So I don't really think anybody killed my duck with malice or intent, but it was definitely negligence. And so what I would say to all folks watching this video right now, please don't let balloons go flying into the air. I mean, it's just absolutely such an awful and needless way for an animal to die. And I'm not just talking about the ducks on my farm. It could be a wild animal, it would be all sorts of things. It's just like littering the world with your garbage by releasing a balloon. And so please don't ever do that. So yeah, that is what probably killed my duck. I know, little barn cat. I'm sad too. Oh, by the way, we actually have another cat in the house right now. As you can see, Molly Murder Mittens is hanging out inside. Last night, I actually noticed that she was limping around a bit and she has some sort of injury on her paw. No, she was just limping around and walking kind of funny. <laughs> I'm gonna take her to the vet later this afternoon to see what's going on. But in case anyone was wondering, Molly Murder Mittens currently has an injured mitten and she's a little bit on the disabled list.